Let's see if we can get VAR AC installed on Linux Mint. Stick around and we'll get right to it. Real quick before we get going today, I've got to give a shout out to these guys. They're my latest patrons over on Patreon. If you'd like to help support the channel, I'll leave a link to Patreon down in the description below. Now normally when I put out a tutorial type video, I'm pretty confident in the results. This time, well, I'm a little less confident, mainly because I'm not a regular VAR AC user. It's something that I have only learned about recently and wanted to uh, get installed on Linux Mint and see if I could actually make a contact. Well, I haven't made a contact yet, but I do have VAR AC, VAR AC installed on Linux Mint 21.1. Now, before you begin on this, be sure to back up your system just in case something goes wrong. And once you've got it installed, if you're a regular VAR AC user, please put it down in the comments what your experience is like once you've got this installed, configured, and up and running. I'll be really interested to know if there's any issues that you run into that I'm just not aware of because I'm not a regular user. All right, without further ado, let's go ahead and jump over to the computer and get this show rolling. Okay, so let's see if we can get this installed. First off, I'm running Linux Mint 21.1, and I've already used 7.3 Linux to install several uh, applications, but primarily the main one I want to, uh, you want to make sure is installed is going to be Vara HF and Vara FM, both of which can be installed with 7.3. So let's go ahead, I'm gonna clear this screen. And the first thing we need to do is get rid of uh, Wine Stable and Wine Tricks that uh, was installed with 7.3 Linux. That's what got the uh, Vara modems installed. We're going to do that with sudo apt purge space wine hyphen stable space wine tricks. Let's go ahead and press return. It's going to ask obviously for my password. So we'll give it that and give it just a second to get those uninstalled. The next thing we need to do is go ahead and start installing Wine. Now I'm not going to call out every single one of these commands. You'll be able to read those copy and paste from the web page. Uh, but the first thing we're going to do here is add the 386 architecture. Following that, we just need to create a directory. So that's what this command here will do. And we're going to go ahead and download uh, the key that we need. After we've got the key downloaded, the next thing we're going to do is update our sources.list.d file. And since we just updated our sources, we will need to go ahead and run a sudo apt update to uh, refresh that sources. And finally, for the wine portion of the install, we can actually go ahead and install the latest stable version. Once that wine install finishes up, I'm going to go ahead and clear the screen and move to the downloads directory with cd space downloads. Next, let's go ahead and download wine tricks. We'll use the wget command to make that happen. I'm going to run the ls command right here and you can see that wine tricks is right here in our list. We do need to make that executable, so I'm going to run chmod plus x wine tricks. And we can finish up by moving that to our user local bin directory. Now that we've got wine and wine tricks installed, we do need to go ahead and install a couple of wine tricks. VB6 run is going to be our first one. Now, something critical to note here. Uh, in this path, you will see my username. You need to make certain that you substitute your username in place of mine. Your username is what's right over here to the left of the at symbol, and it's case sensitive, so make sure that you get uh, the case right as well. Let's go ahead and uh, install this VB6 run. It will ask you if you want to install uh, Wine Mono. We do want to do that, so just go ahead and click install. Now that the VB6 run has been installed, the next thing we need to install is VC run 2015. Let's go ahead and press return on that command and give that one just a couple of minutes to finish up. And you may get a note like this that the VC Run 2015 is already installed, so it's actually skipping it. If it's not already installed, we do need to verify that that one is installed. Let's go ahead and clear the screen again 
and next we need to install .NET 461. After you press return on this one, go grab a cup of coffee. It's going to take this one a few minutes. Okay, when that finally finishes, and I tell you what, that last step installing .NET 461 takes longer than any other step and probably all of the other steps combined in this project. Let's go ahead though and clear that screen. And the last wine trick that we need to install is simply sound equals ALSA. Now you may run into instances where it looks like this is stuck and you see this stub out here at the end. If you just go ahead and press return right there, it should go right back to your command line. I'm going to clear that screen and we need to go ahead and get VAR AC downloaded. And there will be a link to this page in the directions that's linked down in the description below. Let's go ahead and scroll down until we see this section here and we need to give it some basic information. Once you've put in all of your information, go ahead and click download. And once you see this VAR AC download has completed, we can go ahead and minimize the browser. Once that download has completed, let's make sure we're still in our downloads directory. You can see that right here. I'm gonna run the ls command again and you'll see that I have that varac version 806.zip file in this directory. So we need to unzip that and move it to its correct location. So I'm gonna start with unzip varac version 806.zip and then to tell it where we want it to unzip to I'm going to give it the dash D and then the path that you see here on the screen. Again this will be down in that uh, instructions. The only thing that's missing from the instructions is exactly what the name of this file is. You will have to fill in the blanks there. I left it that way just in case this version number changes uh, as time moves forward. I don't want this to become outdated quite as quick. So you will need to substitute the correct file name there if it's changed since this video. Next, let's go ahead and move to the VAR AC directory with cd space tilde forward slash dot wine forward slash drive underscore c forward slash VAR AC. Now, before we attempt to start VAR AC for the first time, stick around after we finish this because I'm going to show you uh, a couple of things that are broken and how we're going to fix those. But to go ahead and attempt to start VAR AC for the first time, we're just going to run wine space varac.exe. Let's go ahead and press return. Now, it's going to take it a couple of minutes, and you're going to see the VAR modem open and close a few different times before everything fires up. And if you did like I did and forgot to put my call sign in the VARA modem, you may end up uh, seeing this error as well. But I'm just going to go ahead and click OK for now, and let's see if it'll go ahead and open up. It's asking me for my call sign, so I'll enter that. And then I'm going to click Save and I'll tell you what, I think you actually do need to put your QTH and your locator. Go ahead and click Save and Exit. and it's going to tell you that a restart is required. I'm going to click OK on that. Let's see if it'll actually try to restart on its own or if I'm going to have to manually do it. So you saw the modem open and close once. I think that happens two or three times. There it is opening again, and I think it's going to close it. Now, I am getting a Microsoft.NET framework error. I'm just going to click Continue here. Once I click continue, you can see that VAR AC opened up. Now, once it opens up, let's go ahead and click on settings and let's come down to rig control and VARA configurations. Once this dialog box opens up, come right down here to the bottom where it says Linux compatibility mode. I'm going to put a check mark by that and then click save and exit. And then I'm going to go ahead and close uh, VAR AC and the VARA modem. Now that we've got our call sign in there and Linux compatibility mode enabled, let's go ahead and try restarting that again. This time it opened and closed the VARA HF modem twice 
and on the third attempt it stayed open and then VAR AC opened. I did get a uh, message about not having rig control configured yet so I would have to change the frequency manually. That's to be expected until we get this completely configured but I did not see that dot uh, that .NET framework or something like that error this time around and I believe that's because we went ahead and checked that Linux compatibility mode. Now I'm going to leave it with you guys here to get it configured for your particular radio and setup. But what I do want to show you real quick before we close this out is a couple of issues that this creates. You may get a program error when uh, you close out of it. It's not a big deal. Just click close there. Now, one issue that it does create is you can no longer go to the menu and start Vara from these menu shortcuts. Let me show you guys how to fix that. What we need to do is edit those shortcut entries. So I'm going to paste in this command here, and this is using nano to edit the Vara.desktop shortcut file. We'll go ahead and press return. And what you will see is in this execute line right here where it says wine stable, let's take out stable and the dash. Once you've got that done, let's press control S to save it and control X to get out of it. We need to repeat that process for the varafm.desktop file. Just like before, we're going to come over and take out stable and that dash so that it just reads wine right there. Once you've got that done, again, control S to save it and X to exit. Now from the menu system, if we go ahead, I'm just going to type Vara and I select Vara right here. It should open up for us just fine. Let's go ahead and check that Vara FM shortcut as well. And you can see the Vara FM opens up without any trouble. Now, one last bit of information here. You will see uh, in the directions on the uh, reference page a way to create a desktop shortcut for starting VAR AC. Uh, we've tried this with a couple of different people. Some people have had success with it. Others have had uh, not so much success with it. So if uh, you can go ahead and try it and see if it'll work on your particular machine. If not, you may just have to start VAR AC manually each time from the command line.